Here's the masses, 2 kilograms and 3 kilograms collide obliquely. Their velocities for far impact are 3i plus 4j and minus 4i plus 3j respectively, where i is along the center of impact. If the coefficient of restitution is 3 over 7, find their velocities after impact and the loss in kinetic energy. Okay, so we're just going to start off with writing now our two formula, m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals a uh, What's it going to be? M1 V1 plus M2 V2. That's your principle of conservation of momentum. Your NEL is minus E equals V1 minus V2 all over U1 minus U2. Now, uh, let's see how we're going to go about doing this, okay? So, what we're going to say is I'm just going to draw a diagram of two, two uh, spheres just sort of going into collision with each other. Just roughly like this here, okay? Now one of them is gone. Does it say anything about the line of centers? There you go. Collision is long along the line of centers of impact. So if you imagine a center of a circle of each one, okay, basically uh, you're looking at this being like the x-axis, if you will. That's the x-axis. And then they're both traveling different speeds. So uh, we'll call this one the two kilogram mass is going to be to the right. So it's traveling uh up and to the right right we need an arrow on that one that one's traveling up and to the right and the other one is traveling left and up isn't it four to the left three up so there you go there's your sorry your speeds there now the thing to remember is the collision the plane of the collision takes place along the uh the j axis right so what what speed will be affected the i or the j all right. If you have a wall and you collide against the wall and then rebound backwards, if you're going before the, before you hit the wall, if you're going a uh, three i plus five j, and the coefficient of restitution is e equals one third, how far fast are you going on the way out? Only the i is affected. So what's one third of minus three? I say what's one third of three? one so you're going minus one i on the way out and your j component remains unchanged because you're hitting a wall that's parallel to the j axis do you understand that so therefore what we're effect where we're treating the second sphere as right that's there right there uh, we're treating the second uh well you're treating the second sphere as is almost like a moving wall okay so that's why already we know that in this collision here, the uh, the J values are going to remain unchanged. So if you will, what I'm just going to do is just going to separate these out a bit more for a second. Now that I've explained the line of centers. So we're going to have is before collision, after collision, we're going to break them up into their components. So we'll do the before picture first. Before picture is a tree across, far up. Uh, after pit, uh, sorry, this is uh, the two kilogram. This is the three kilogram, which is going uh, three far to the left and uh, three up. Okay, so we can work with a uh, PCM right away. So let's do PCM, which is here. Let's see if we can drag it down. There we go. PCM goes okay. So PCM is M1 U1. So what's M1 going to be? Now, see this little I I put here? It means PCM along the I axis only. You're not counting in the J values at all. So it's going to be 2 times uh, 3 plus 3 times minus 4 equals uh, 2 times V1 plus 3 times V2. 2 V1 plus 3 V2, therefore, must equal 6 minus 12, which is going to get us minus six there is one of your equations done now you're going to bring down your uh new one's experimental law and start working on that one okay that's our pcm there now we're going to bring down new one's experimental law and start working there so what we're going to get this time around is uh the after picture goes i never did the after picture i'm going to do that now so what's the story with your after picture what what do you think will happen 
Well, what we're guaranteed happens is that the uh, J components of both particles are unaffected. So the first thing you can write in the before and after is that the J components are unaffected. Okay. Now, just for uh, convention sake or technique sake, we're going to put V1 and V2 going to the right. They don't necessarily continue. They don't necessarily go right. V2 will be negative if it's going left. V1 will be negative if it's going left. But I always like to put them positive and going to the right. You should do that for every question. Okay. Now, uh, our E value is minus 3 over 7. The minus 3 over 7 equals V1 minus V2. No problems there. Now, what's U1 minus U2 on the bottom? It's going to be a... Uh, 3 minus minus 4. What does the 3 minus minus 4 represent, lads? What's the answer for it first start? 7. It's how fast the I components are charging into each other. Remember, 4 to the left, 3 to the right. It's, a, it's come in at 7. That's why it's called a, it's a relative velocity. It's an application of relative velocity. So it's coming in at 7. So you, you cross multiply this 7 upwards, once you realize it's 7, so we'll just do that there. And you realize this here is 7. So what can you say about V1 minus V2? V1 minus V2? Minus 3. V1 minus V2 equals minus 3. Uh, solving this in the conventional, uh, sort of the conventional way, we're going to get V1 equals uh, minus 3 and V2 ends up to be 0. That right? So V1 equals minus 3, V2 equals 0. Okay. Now, find their velocities after impact. So what are the velocities after impact, guys? So V1 is minus 3. Minus 3 means you're going to D. You're going to the left at 3. 0 means what about the other one? The other one is just going directly up after the collision. Okay, so your velocities after the collision, uh, we can call them, we just call them particle A and particle B. So V A equals uh, minus 3 I plus 4 J. It basically got reversed. Uh, the other one, V B, is just going to be 3 J. Okay, next one, the loss in kinetic energy, okay? How would you go about doing the loss in kinetic energy? Can anybody tell me? Loss in kinetic energy? Uh, kinetic energy before minus kinetic energy after. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, Ke before. Now, can anybody tell me what's the hypotenuse of both triangles? It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, isn't it? So their speeds, technically speaking, are 5 going up this direction, 5 going up that direction. So the kinetic energy before will be a half, uh, it's a half mv squared, call it v1 squared plus a half mv2 squared, right? v1 and v2 aren't represented by what I just got, it's just the generic velocity before impact, okay? So in effect, it's just v, don't, don't really worry about the 1 and the 2. Okay, so what we're going to have here is a half, uh, 2 times 5 squared, and the other one's going to be a half, uh, 3 times 5 squared. And we'll tell you what that is. I'm hoping it's 62.5. Yeah. And we're on the calculator. Huh? Fair enough, so. All right. Uh, kinetic energy afterwards, okay? K afterwards is going to be, once again, we're looking at these here. This one here is uh, coming back with a velocity of 5, a 3, 4, 5 triangle, remember that? And this one is just a straight line going up a 3. So it's going to be a half, 2 times 5 squared. That stays exactly the same. It's the same before and after. And the other one's going to be a half, uh, just going three directly up. So it's half three times three squared. 
What's that in the calculator? I'm going for 30, yeah, it should be 38 and a half joules. So, what's your loss in kinetic energy? Take them away from each other. This one minus this one. Your loss in kinetic energy is 24 joules. All right. So it wants the magnitude of the. Uh, what's the word magnitude mean? It doesn't matter. Like if you have a if you have a force and you say uh, 20 newtons to the left, that's minus 20. 20 newtons to the right is plus 20. The magnitude for both of them is 20. So basically, sine is irrelevant. Okay. So what we're going to do here is a. Uh, Impulse is your change in momentum, okay? So your change in momentum. Now, impulse uh, equals mv minus mu. Pick a particle to use. Which one would you like to use? To which one's easier to use? I say the three kilogram one is easier to use, isn't it? Because it has no i component in the second one. So mv minus mu. Okay, we'll try this out. So impulse is uh, two times your your final velocity. What's your final velocity for this one? Just three going straight up in the air. Uh, three j. Be very specific about if it's j or i. And then the other one minus two times u. What's u for that one? Minus four i plus. Uh, What's it? 3J, is it? 3J? Oh, yeah, it is 3. You said that. Well, it's not 3. It's the same. Oh, I'm hearing things. Anyways, it's the same uh, mass. You're just examining the 2 kilogram mass only. So, MV minus MU is all relating back. Just, it's just the 2 kilogram mass. I'll do it for the 3 kilogram mass in a second. Okay. So, we're going to get here is uh, 2 times 3j okay, oh sorry uh, yeah right I did it I did both of them should be 3 yeah. sorry about that so I'm actually doing for the 3 kilograms here I'll do 2 kilograms here in a minute so it's going to be 9j <laughs> what's that plus 12i Minus 9j cancel, and the answer is going to be uh, 12, isn't it? So uh, 12 i uh, kilograms meters per second, unit of mass, unit of speed. Okay. Now, do you notice the way the uh, the j components just cancel themselves out? There's a trick in there, isn't there? You could just isolate the i components for impulse and do it that way. Okay? I'll show you the two kilogram mass anyway, two different ways. So once again, I just the two kilogram mass now this times. So it's gonna be two times something minus two times something. So what's the final velocity of the two kilogram mass? Minus three i plus four j. And then the other one, minus two times, uh, we're at this part here, isn't it? <coughs> oh, sorry, no, no, the other part, excuse me. Uh, your initial velocity, which is 3i plus 4j. What you notice this time? The, uh, once again, the j components are cancelling, because their, their speeds are the same before and after collision. And what you're going to get is minus 6i. Minus another 6i gives us minus 12i. Can anybody tell me why are they different in sign? Any reason? For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. If one of the particles if the two particles hit each other, one of them experiences a 12i change in momentum. The other one's got experience a minus 12i change in momentum. Either way, we're looking for the magnitude, so it's going to be uh, 12. 
Uh, the key thing is when you're doing these, make sure you use, if you're comparing them, make sure you always use the same way, MV minus MU every time. If you change that around, MU minus MV, you'll still get 12 as your answer, but the first one will be minus 12 and the second one will be plus 12, but the magnitudes remain unchanged. Now, finally, this the trick you might need to be aware of is that we didn't need to consider the J components whatsoever. So we could have just said 2 times minus 3i for the last one. And you can call it an impulse along i because only the speed along the i directions are changed. So minus 2 times 3i minus 2 bracket 3i and that gives you minus 12i. That's going to come in much handier when you have lots of letters you're using in your question. You're just going to not even consider the j components. Okay? Makes it a lot easier. Now, Let's go for another one. Number four. Sphere of mass m. Uh, I'm going to start with PCM and NEL before I even read the question. Because I know that's how we do it. And then we'll do NEL down here. Uh, NEL being uh, phi 1, oh, sorry, minus e equals u1 plus. Oh dear, losing it here. U1 minus U2 all over V1 minus V2. Okay, sphere of mass 2m moving with velocity 5i plus 5j collides, collides obliquely with a sphere of mass m which is at rest. I is along the line of sense of impact. That's the key word there because basically it's what I drew earlier today. You can basically make your uh, collision. It's just along the centers. So that's the way to collide. Okay? So now that we've established that, uh, if the coefficient restitution is a half, find the velocity of each sphere's after impact. Automatically, just go straight for uh, NEL and PCM. So we have a before and after picture. Okay, uh, 2M. Does it say identical sphere? No, M. So I uh, won't put the arrows in like that. So the first one is going uh, across and up, up at two different speeds. What are the speeds again? Five up, five across. Second one is going zero. No need to put any lines. After collision, what are we going to do? What's our system? Like your, your system's almost set in stone here. What 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 do I write for after collision? Anybody know? Okay. V1 and V2 automatically go to the right just by convention. Okay? Uh, what goes up is the 5 because your J component is unaffected by the collision. Uh, this one can't have a J component. So we understand why. In the last question we showed that the momentum transfer is along the I axis only. Therefore when two of them collide with a stationary particle all the all the uh, velocity is transferred along the i axis only, so it's still going to have an unchanged j component of zero. Okay, go into our formula: two uh, m times u one, which is two m times five. Uh, m two u two, which is going to be uh, m times zero equals m v one plus m v two. V1 plus V2, therefore, should be equal to 10. Uh, I always do this one. It's, uh, see the formula? See the, see the way the formula is MV1? The first particle is 2M, so that's a very common mistake. You know, I, I'd be guilty of that a lot. So please remember, when you see M there, just, re, just go back up to what actually are your mass, sometimes you can go on default because it says M already. So it's actually 2V1 plus V2 equals 10 because the first mass is 2M. Okay. Next one is your uh, Newton's experimental law. So we got a uh, minus E equals U1 minus U2, which is going to be uh, 5 minus 0. Sir? Yes? It's V1 minus V2. Is it? Yes, it is. Thank you. 
uh, V1 minus V2 over U1 minus U2. Yeah, yeah, because you have to get that, yeah. Thanks. Uh, V1 minus V2 all over uh, 5 minus 0. Once again, we're only considering this along the Y axis. Okay. So V1, uh, what's E again, guys? E is, is a half? Yeah. Okay. Solve it, so we're going to get V1 minus V2 ends up to be minus 2.5. Same thing as that. Uh, same thing as uh, if you really want it, just get rid of it. It's the same thing as uh, 2v1 minus 2v2 ends up to be equal to uh, 5 if you don't want to deal with the decimal places. Anyways, go through solving it. You'll find out that v1 is uh, 21 over 2 or 10.5. You'll find out that v2 equals 5. Question one refers to what is the velocity of each sphere after impact. Let's call them sphere A and sphere B again. Sphere A being the uh, 2m particle. So A equals 2m mass. B equals m mass. So phi A equals, what's phi A guys? It's going to be uh, 21 over 2 or 21 over 2 i because that's uh, 21 over 2 now plus 5j and the next one VB is going to be uh, just simply uh, 5i plus uh, yes really? oh minus 5 really? ok Two times twenty-one over two plus five is equal to ten. Excuse me, I'm just taking it from the book at this stage, so that's why I was looking at it. I'll just make sure my formulas are right. Uh, two two times the first velocity plus the second velocity equals ten. Okay. Yeah. Two times twenty-one over two. Excuse me. Five is equal to ten. Okay, I'll go through the uh, i the solving process. They're usually pretty correct, but there are occasions where they're not correct. What's it? Minus five, isn't it? So, first one we're going to have to multiply by, uh, multiply the top one by 2. 4v1 plus 2v2 equals 20. 2v1 minus 2v2 equals minus 5. 6v1 ends up to be 15. V1 therefore is uh, 15 over 6. What's 15 over 6? You're right about that, Tom. What is it? So it's 5 over 2. Okay, so with that. So this uh, part here, let's change that to 5 over 2. That obviously means they're wrong about the second part as well, already. So uh, enter in, enter in 2.5, yeah. So 2 times uh, 5 over 2. Plus V2 equals 10. V2 actually still equals uh, 5. Yeah, good spot. Uh, if you want to fix your notes on that, it's uh, question 4 on the solutions. It has, uh, has 21 over 2. I actually think they meant to put in 2.5, but they forgot to separate the 2 from the half. That's, that's what happens. So. Now, find the impulse. Who's going to tell me the shortcut for impulse, guys? And we know the shortcut for impulse. Impulse equals mv minus mu. Impulse for particle A has got to be, so for particle A, we're just going to go along the. Uh, We're just going to go along the i. We're going to go along the uh, i axis only. So what we're going to get is 2m is the mass. 2m times uh, your initial velocity was 5 along the i axis minus 2m times uh, 
major impulse was of magnitude uh, what's that going to be? It's going to be a uh, 10 m minus 5 m, which is going to be 5 m kilograms meters per second. Uh, I B, which is the impulse along B, is going to be uh, m times something minus m times something. Its final velocity was worth 5. Uh, oh, sorry. It's. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't necessarily made a mistake, but what I did do was I put u instead of v and v instead of u. So the first one should be 2.5 and the second one should be 5. Remember the initial velocity is u. u is going across at 5. It comes out at 2.5. So two po it's going to be minus 5 meters. See, the problem with mv minus mu is you don't make a mistake on the magnitude. You just make a mistake on the sign. Does it the sign? The sign doesn't really matter. Absolute values. That's what I mean, it doesn't matter. It's very like, uh, you'll know if you have the same system because one of them will come out as the negative of the other one. It's important to have the same system, but what, which one you choose on the day doesn't really matter. Okay, so likewise, uh, this one here is MV. After collision, it starts off at 5 and it goes 0, and that's going to be plus M. Uh, 5 m kilograms meters per second. That's how I sense a mistake in my system. Not necessarily a mistake, but that's how I sense an inconsistency. Because an inconsistency would one of them has to be the negative of the other one. It will come more significant when you have uh, you have to solve stuff and you don't know the numbers. You have to make sure one of them is the negative of the other one, and then you're going to put them both equal to each other to figure out uh, a variable that you don't know. So it's very important that you you keep the same system. Okay. So I mean by the same system as MV minus MU every time. Okay. Now, uh, the percentage loss in kinetic energy, guys. Percentage loss in kinetic energy. So how are we going to go about doing that? Any takers? Percentage loss in kinetic energy. No takers. Okay. So. Uh, if you really want to watch your, if you really want to go start off with the complete equation and and work, uh, figure out your technique from that, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to say loss in Ke, so you can only say Ke loss divided by uh, Ke before, <coughs> multiplied by 100 over 1, and that's the same thing as a uh, Ke before minus k after all over k before multiplied by 100 over 1 you know your process it's just a matter of actually doing it okay so k before is going to be a half it's always a half mv squared only one particle was moving wasn't it only one particle was moving before the collision occurred. So I'm going to find the hypotenuse of that particle. Uh, the hypotenuse is going to be 25 plus 25, which is 50. The hypotenuse is square root of 50. Okay? So, square root of, uh, it's a half, 2m, times root 50 squared. The other one wasn't moving, so it's worth zero. It's going to be a uh, 50 m joules, 50 times your mass in joules. Your k after, guys, k after is going to be a bit more complicated. <coughs> uh, your k after, this one is now moving 2.5 to the to the right and 5 up. So I'm going to get the square root. Am I going to add 2.5 to uh, 5 squared? 5 squared, that's going to get me the hypotenuse squared, I'm going to square root that number and I'm going to find out that the it's 5 root 5 over 2. 
I'm gonna have to square it anyway, am I? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna, if I have phi squared, I'm gonna be using phi squared anyway. So I might as well just say, like, uh, I might as well just say phi squared is 125 over over four, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be square in it and then squaring it back out again. So you might as well. So it's gonna be a half two m times something which is a uh, phi squared plus a half m times uh, what's the speed of the m particle after collision you see it here it's going five to the right so five squared now we know that this phi squared turns out to be 125 over four I'm going to multiply this out the halves cancel you have 125 over 4m plus uh, 25 over 2m. What's that? 175 over 4m. Now that's your k after. So let's just re redo this. K after is 175 over 4m. Was K before? K before was 50M. So, uh, loss in KE guys. KE loss. 50M minus 175 over 4M. 50M can be converted into 200M over 4. Take them away from each other. The loss in kinetic energy will be 25m over 4 we got to revisit our original formula which is that one there ok so loss in kinetic energy 25m over 4 divided by your original kinetic energy 200m over 4 that's going to make the whole thing a lot easier multiply by 100 over 1 it's going to be 1 8 multiplied by 100 which should be 12.5% is what's called the angle of deflection we had a uh, only one angle undergoes like uh, uh, angular deflection that's the uh, pergolet all right the pergolet originally was going 45 degrees would you agree with that it was going five up and five across so you definitely know it's going uh, 45 degrees okay after the collision what happens to it its I value becomes changed, doesn't it? Its I value went down from it was five, it was a, uh, it was five up, five across, and that gives you your forty-five degree angle. After the collision, it becomes a uh, narrower angle because the uh, relative to the opposite side, the adjacent side has now halved, hence a. Oh, sorry, a bigger angle is formed. Excuse me, a bigger angle is formed. Okay, so we're going to tan inverse 5 over 2.5. Uh, tan inverse 5 divided by 2.5. Make sure you're in degrees mode. 63.44, uh, let's call it. It's the best, fairest way to call it. So angle B is 63.44. So, long story short, before impact, you're here. After impact, you're up here. What was the uh, change in your angle? 63.44, take away 45, and what you get? And we know? Eighteen point four four. To say nearest degree or anything like that. No. Eighteen point four four degrees. Or, as it it does it in the it does it in the uh, what's it called? So eighteen point four four. Sometimes it wants it in angle and radians. You just press this button here. Eighteen uh, degrees twenty six minutes twenty four seconds. Twenty four seconds is below thirty. 
which means round down 18 degrees 26 minutes okay all right so that's question four done uh, question six is the same question so what are you 